Hello everyone, today we're going to be solving problems using what we know about solving equations. Before we do that though, I want to have you do a warm up with just simple equations that have already been written for us. So please solve each equation. Um, because these have decimals, I believe that using algebra will be much simpler than trying to use a tape diagram. So it is okay with me if you use a calculator. So please show your work, what you're doing to both sides. So you're communicating your math thinking for me, and you may use a calculator. Come back when you have finished. Pause the video, do these problems, and come back. All right, let's see how you did. So here, algebraically, I had to use additive inverse to get rid of this because I wanted x on the side by itself. So since it was a positive 13.42, I subtracted. It's added, so I subtracted. Or you can look at it like these are additive inverses, so they're opposites. So that gets us to 0 here, so we're just left with the x. And I subtracted to get 2.2. .2. Now, to check your work, I want to remind you, now we think x is 2.2. .2. So we're going to plug 2.2 .2 in for x and see if we add 13.42, do we come up with 15.62? Add my 0 as a placeholder, 2, 6, and remember when you're adding, you're lining up the decimals, 15.62. That works out, it matches, so this makes a true statement. That's for you, Sienna, true statement. All right, so this next one, this time, it's a minus 6.5, or a negative 6.5. So since it was minus, we had to add it back in to make a zero. So we can see these are opposites. So if I, and it looks like a minus, but it's not, it's an addition sign. So if I added, I have to line up my decimals. 7 plus 5 is 12, carry the 1. Or you could use a calculator, but again, to check it, we're going to plug that 10 point or substitute 10.2 in for y. So 10.2 minus 6.5. And I'll just do it without a calculator. I come up with 3.7. So that checks out. I know this is my answer. Now the last two problems are very similar. They both have a 2.2 .2 and a 13.2. But in this case, x is being multiplied by 2.2. .2. So to get rid of it, we have to divide. If you do it on one side, you have to do it on the other. 13.2 .2 divided by 2.2 .2 is 6. Over here, though, in the original problem, x is being divided by 2.2. .2, so we have to multiply by 2.2. 13.2 .2 .2 is 29.04, or 29 and 4 hundredths. And then you should plug that back in and work forwards this time to check your work. All right, let's solve some real problems, real life problems by writing equations. So it says write an equation showing the relationship between x and the angle that has a measure of 115 degrees. So we're looking at this and this right here. In seventh grade or course two, there's many problems, a whole mini unit on problems like this. So what we know, since they form a straight line, straight lines add to 180 degrees. So we know that if we have our x and we add the 115 to it, we come up with our 180 degrees. So now from here, we can work backwards to solve for x. It's plus 15, so we're going to subtract 15. And 180 minus 115 is 65. So 65 plus 115 should add to 180. So again, I was able to do that because I remembered that straight lines, straight lines 
add to 180. So we solve for x. Now it's asking, what does this mean for y? Well, we can think of this in two different ways. y also forms a straight line with that 115. So since it forms a straight line with 115, we could do the same exact thing to find out that y equals 65 degrees as well. And the other way we could think about it is these are called vertical angles. Vertical angles, because they're across from one another. So since they're vertical angles, we know vertical angles are congruent or have the same measure. So that is also how we could find this 65 degrees. Given the last example, I want to see if you can write the, an equation for this and solve for x. I want to remind you that any time you have a corner, a right angle, right angles are 90 degrees. So x and 49 are called, so these two degrees are called complementary, complementary angles. Complementary angles add to 90 degrees. And I remember this because it is the right thing to do to complement someone. So see if you can write that equation and solve for x. All right, so since we knew that those two angles were complementary and added to 90 degrees, I could put the sum of them equal to 90, and then, since it was plus 49, we had to get rid of that positive 49, so we subtracted 49 to get 41, and then I checked my work, 41 plus 49 equals 90, so I knew that x had to be 41 degrees. All right, another type of problem. It costs $4 for each rented movie. If n represents the number of movies, write an equation if the total cost was $56. So think about this. If we rented zero movies, so number of movies, n, if we rented zero, we would pay zero. But for every movie that we rented, the cost went up four. So if we rented two movies, it would be eight, and three movies would be 12, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the rate of each movie is $4. So we can take our four times the number of movies, because in each case we had to multiply by four to get our cost, so 4n equals the total cost of 56. So again, because our rate was $4 for each movie, if we didn't know how many we rented, we could do 4 times that number. So now I have my equation, and then to solve the equation, it's multiplied, so we're going to divide. So 56 divided by 4... And again, you can use a calculator. Don't be afraid to do that because I'm testing your process now, not your arithmetic, is 14 movies. So there were 14 movies rented. Now, before I completely box that, I just want to double check my arithmetic. 14 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 1 plus 1 is 56. That checks out. So I know that there were 14 movies. All right, this one is very similar, except we're talking about babysitting. So if you make $8.50 per hour, $8.50 per hour, how many hours would you have to babysit to get $51? So again, zero hours, zero dollars. One hour... So this is the number of hours, and this is the, so I guess we're going to use T for time, and this is the amount, or total payment, or amount. After one hour, she had $8.50. After two hours, she would have 
double that amount, so $17, and it goes up by $8.50 each time. So if she babysat n number of hours, we would take our $8.50, and, oh, I'm sorry, I still, I'm using n, t, t for time, t hours, we would take our $8.50 and multiply it by the number of hours. So, $8.50 times her number of hours equals 51. And to solve, it's multiplied, so we're going to divide. And 51 divided by 8.5 is 6 hours. So first, don't forget your label. Second, make sure you're showing how you're solving this. And then make sure that you plug it back in to check your answers. All right, I would like you to try this one on your own. So this is where you pause. It's very similar to the last two. Pause and then come back and see how you did. Okay, how'd you do? So first I wanna talk about let statements. Because it didn't tell us what variable to use, I made sure that I told the person reading my paper what variable I was using. And I decided to use X for number of tickets. But you might have used T, you might have, whatever. N for number. But make sure you let the reader of your paper know what your variable represents if it is not written into the problem. So X is the number of tickets. Because that's what I was trying to find. I was trying to find the number of tickets sold. So there was two for each, two dollars for each ticket. So if we were showing this on a table, zero tickets sold, my cost would be zero. And I'll use this for Y. If there is one ticket, it'd be two dollars. If there's two tickets, it would be four dollars. So we're going up two every time. If there is three, three times two is six. There was four, four times two is eight. So if there's N, I used an X. If it's X, X times two would be our total amount collected. So here is my two X, and here is the total amount collected. And so since it was multiplied, I divided to get 218. I checked my arithmetic. And then I answer the question, 218 tickets were sold. So when I'm looking at your problem, I am looking, did you name your variable? Did you write the equation correctly? Did you solve? Did you check? And then did you answer the question? All right, that's it for this lesson. Do your assignment. Let me know if you need help. We out.